and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So this is the second part in a three part series of my Visconti pens. And here I'm just showing you which pens I have in my collection. I've had a lot of questions um, over the last few years on how many pens I have or how many Visconti pens I have. And I thought really it's probably about time that I actually show them all in... I was going to say one video, although there are too many pens here. I was at, I think, 65 or 67 pens at one point. I've reduced them to 57 now, Viscontis. And I've shown you in part one, if you've not watched that already, go watch that. Uh, that has 20 pens. And here today we will have another 20 pens. And I'll just discuss the pens and why I added them to the collection. And maybe a little bit of a backstory to them. So, from left to right, we have the trusty Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. Now, I'd actually picked up the London Fog and the Florentine Hills prior to this, but I wanted one of these Bronze Ages. I wanted a pen that was made out of basaltic lava that was hard as a rock almost. And I decided I would buy one. And to be honest, I didn't get a good price for this. I actually paid probably a little bit more than the MSRP uh, at the time. But since then, the prices have gone up. Uh, I got this with a fine nib on it. And it was okay, but I realized that I'm really not into fine nibs. I do actually like this now, to be honest. But... At the start, I didn't really like it too much uh, in terms of how crisp it wrote. This is a Paravac filler. It's not a double reservoir, um, but it's a really sturdy pen and uh, a good workhorse pen. And then I think it was about a year or two later, I then discovered this. And again, it's a Bronze Age. Homo sapiens Bronze Age, same as this one, but it is a Marzi edition and Claudio Marzi airbrush painted this lovely erupting volcano of Mount Etna on the pen and this is a pen there were 388 of these made worldwide this is number 386 now I have this with a 1.3 millimeter stub nib on it and I think that's what was it what came with it no I think it came with a medium nib and then I swapped the nib out on this pen it's a power vac filler you can see in the size of my hand so this airbrush painting is actually smooth to the touch it's actually lacquered over so that it shouldn't scratch over time from general use it has a hook safe lock on there but I do like how this writes and then I decided to pick up a bronze swirl. I saw this when it came out and I was talking with the Visconti CEO at the time and he said that he would send me a few pens for review. Uh, there was this one and there was the Homo Sapiens Evolution and I reviewed both of those and I have reviews on my channel here but this bronze swirl is really beautiful and I, I am a sucker for these swirl pens and this ribbon swirl on it is absolutely gorgeous. So I decided at that point um, I would go and buy one. But I spoke to the CEO of Sconti at the time. And he said that I could buy this one if I didn't want to return it. And the price was actually a good price. So I decided I would buy it rather than buy one in a store. And I really liked this pattern so much that I was really hoping I could buy this one. And I did. So... This is a lovely size pen. You can post the cap on it as well. And it comes a little bit long. Uh, it has a 23 cap palladium nib. He asked me what nib I wanted for the review. And I said a 1.3 millimeter stub nib. And that's what came on the pen. And that was really the other reason why I bought the pen. Because it's harder to get hold of these 1.3 millimeter stub nibs. So I was really glad that not only did I get the chance directly from Visconti, from the CEO, to be able to receive this pen on loan for a review, but also I was able to buy it as well and add it to my collection. Now, 
a lot of people think that we get given free pens and that's not normally the case and this was not I, I had to buy the pen I did get a discount but I had to buy the pen and then there's this one and I bought this after the original Homo sapiens Bronze Age I wanted the the dark black stealth look and I like the look of this. I like the laser etching on the clip for the Visconti name. I like the Homo sapiens bands done in black. And I just liked it a lot. And this is the, uh, again, a Paravac filler, hook safe lock mechanism. And I bought this with a 23 cat palladium medium nib. Now, strangely enough, I actually ordered this from Colt Pens. And the pen came with a huge gap between the two tines, and it just wouldn't, it, it would start off writing, but it wouldn't continue writing. So I sent it back. About four weeks later, they still didn't have a replacement pen because it was coming from Visconti. So I cancelled the order and I decided to contact John Haller right here, and I did. And he said, Yeah, I've got one of these. I'll, I'll, uh, I said, Can you test the nib? Because I've already had a bad experience. He tested the nib, said it's right, it's fine. And he sent it to me. He sent it to me and he sent me the MIDI version, not the oversized version. Luckily, he had the oversized in stock and he was able to send me the oversized the next day. I returned the MIDI and all was good. And I got the pen that I wanted for effectively the same price. But I would have got it from Colt Pens. But it just goes to show that sometimes when you're buying a pen, there can be troubles uh, ahead and... Uh, that was just one of one of a few times where I've had problems with pens. And then I bought this one, and this I bought from again Chris at Truffay. Uh, I bought a number of Viscontis from Chris. Uh, this is the lovely Istos Arachnis, and this is a really great pen. He had a I think two or three of these available at the time. He had one in a bigger box, one in, or two in these smaller clamshell boxes. I, I picked up one in the smaller clamshell box, and I got it for a good price, and I really do like this. It's a Paravac filler. It's a spider's web with a spider on the pen, and you can see there it's a double uh, reservoir, and it's a 23 cap palladium medium nib as well. And I just like some of these overlays that Visconti did. And for me, this was something that I liked the look of. Um, I'm not into spiders, but I decided that I would uh, get this because uh, I liked the look of it. And I added that to my collection. And then in 2019, in February, for my birthday... Uh, a little bit earlier actually because it was in January I decided to get this and this is the Jacques de Molay and I picked this up from Marco Novelli this is a really lovely pen I'd been after one of these Templar series pens for a long time I looked at a number I'd been offered a number that was second hand from collectors I really wanted the Jacques de Molay because it looks a lot better it also comes with a sword or a dagger uh, which is a, a, a letter opener and also with a large ring as well. Uh, but for me, the Jacques de Molay was the, the best of the best. So I decided I, this was the pen I was going to pick up. And Marco was trying to get me to buy not only a pen, but any pen. And I said, the only pen I'm really after is the Jacques de Molay. And Marco said, no worries. I'll go find one for you. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, he's not going to be able to find one. And he came back and, and, and found one. He actually managed to get one direct from Visconti. So I ended up paying a lot of money uh, for this pen. But I don't regret it in any way, shape or form. It's a beautiful, beautiful stunning pen. And I picked up this Visconti. I have uh, in the, the first series uh, the Caput Mundi and also the Chiantashir. And I like the look of this green version, the jade. And it comes with a jade gemstone here on the uh, cap finial. It's a Paravac filler and it's Homo sapiens. And I do like these. Hook safe lock mechanism and it's a 23 cap palladium medium nib. Um, 
and I picked this up from Chris at Truefay. Uh, I wanted another one of these uh, sort of semi-opaque um, sort of looking pens. And I really wanted one to match with the red of the cap at Mundi. And this was a lovely green. So I decided I would pick this one up. And I do love the, the Homo Sapiens. And then we have this one. And I had a few Voyagers, Visconti Voyagers. And uh, this is the Midnight Voyager. And it's the forest green version. And... I saw this on eBay and I decided I was going to buy it. I do like this Kaleido uh, sort of white swirl pattern going on there. And I decided that I would buy this one. And as luck would have it, they had the same set that had this one and the Yellow Dawn. So I picked them both up. But you can see here this, this pattern is absolutely stunning. Now it comes with the Voyager old keel clip. And it's a cartridge converter pen. So it's not a Pavac filler. But these actually came with 14 karat gold nibs. Now, these are not flexible nibs. So this one is a fine nib there that you can see. And it has the old style Visconti logo on the nib, on the nib imprint. But these are really nice pens and, and I do like these. So this was a little bit of a, uh, on, on a whim, I decided I saw these on eBay from a um, pen shop in Italy. I decided I would buy these quickly. So there's that one, and then there was this one, which is the again the Visconti Voyager, the Kaleido Voyager, and it's the Yellow Dawn. And this was the one that I was really after. But I saw he the the seller had both of them, and they were actually very reasonable prices. So I decided I would actually buy both of them. Uh, unfortunately, I got pay, I got charged. Uh, shipping on both so uh, maybe I could have saved a little bit um, but again this is a 14 karat gold nib um, and these were new pens they were not uh, inked up they were not used and again uh, these are converters I'll show you here I didn't show you on the other one there but these are just standard uh, Visconti converters but these pens are beautiful pens and I wanted to add a few more voyages to my collection and for me this was a gorgeous pen so it was a spur of the moment purchase I saw it there and it was like I'm buying these and I bought them and unfortunately that's how some of the pens are that I add to my collection and I'm trying to do that less now as time goes on because at the end of the day it's not good to, to impulse buy because you kind of then regret the purchases sometimes so I'm trying to be more structured in my purchasing of pens and partly that's why I actually let 20 of my pens go and, and sold them uh, in July through August 2019. So let's look at the next 20 pens. So here are the next 20 pens in part two of this video. So from left to right we have the Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog. This was the very first Visconti that actually pushed me down the Visconti bandwagon route and you can see why this is a beautiful stunning pen now because it's fully inked up you don't see those ribbon swirls that much in the pen as much as you would if the pen was uninked which is a little bit of a shame uh, this is a beautiful size in the Homo sapiens it's a power vac filler and it's a double reservoir hook safe lock mechanism and a fine nib and the story behind this is that I wanted the London Fog, but I wanted it in a medium nib. And Ross at Pure Pens didn't have it in a medium nib. And I really hadn't had a lot of buying experience up until that point. Uh, he had a Florentine Hills in a medium nib, though. And he said he could swap the nibs between the two pens. I didn't like the sound of that. I didn't like the idea of it. I didn't know if it would create a Franken pen down the road and down the line and then... Uh, caused me problems when I wanted to sell the pen so I decided I would just buy it with a fine nib I ordered it it arrived the next day and I was blown away not only by the beauty of this pen but also on how the fine nib wrote although I really wanted a medium nib so at that point I decided to go and buy the Florentine Hills with a medium nib uh, so within two days I had spent a lot of money on two pens but that's really what started me off down the Visconti uh, route, uh, the bandwagon. And 
it's a beautiful pen and I still use it uh, most days now. And then there's this beautiful pen, uh, and I picked this up from Chris at Truffaut. He uh, came up with this pen and said, look, I've got a number of uh, pens on consignment. There's this beautiful pen, and I said, it's beautiful, but it's too much. It's too expensive. Um, and then I started to think about it. I thought, you know what? I can afford this pen, and I would buy it. And I went to go and buy it, but unfortunately, Chris had listed it on auction. So I was a little bit sort of upset by that and I said to Chris look I really actually did want that pen now um, and he said well I can actually get another one for you and he was able to secure this one for me and it's an absolute beautiful pen it's a Visconti Luxor Obelisk there were only 88 of these pens made and you can see this lovely uh, Macchie this reproduces uh, the hieroglyphs that are on the uh, Luxor uh, obelisk and there were two of these one uh, they were in Egypt and one then got shipped to France and uh, this is a sort of a reproduction of those it's an ebonite pen uh, with a macchie over the top and then a lacquer I think it's six or eight layers of lacquer I'm not sure if it's Yerushi lacquer or not um, the beauty of this pen is that it's uh, a power vac filler and it's a double reservoir and it also has the 23 cap palladium nibs and it's a medium nib and you can see here the engraving uh, of the uh, number there the limited edition number and for me that's number 22 of 88 and 8 being in Asian uh, cultures a lucky number and that's why a lot of Italian manufacturers actually do use 8 because they are trying to sell pens to uh, people in Asia and then in February 2019 I was able to pick up thankfully through Sarge the one man pen show I saw um, and I got word of the Visconti Manhattan Arco being made for ASC and I knew that there weren't going to be that many of these uh, available and there were only going to be 70 so as I do normally, I enlisted Sarge and said, Sarge, go find me one. And he managed to pick up several in the LA Pen Show uh, in February. And one of them was for me. And he came back with this one. Uh, he really was only, uh, I think retailers were only allowed one. Uh, but he came back with two. So I'm really glad that Sarge managed to secure me this one. Uh, he also secured me the... Um, uh, the Armando Simone Club uh, Il Gladiatore at the same time so it was actually a very expensive month for me but I managed to pick these up at the um, London Pen Show the new spring show in March um, so this really is there were only 70 of these made and this is number 29 it's a uh, Visconti uh, made of Arco from uh, the Arco brown that ASC managed to buy from Omas it's a power vac filler it's a double reservoir and it's got a single thread which means that the Arco pattern always lines up and it's got an 18 karat gold medium nib with an ebonite feed now this pen actually writes more like a fine to an extra fine for me um, but to be honest it's still a pen that I like writing with and there are times when I will write with fine nibs or extra fine nibs so uh, it's a pen that I've actually been writing with a lot and getting used to and I'm starting to like more finer nibs now and then back in 2017 Visconti released the first Medici and this is a just a standard Medici uh, and it's made of a resin with uh, acro silk and you can see there this chatoyance that goes on there in the body it sort of sparkles a bit now I bought two of these from Chris at Truffet uh, I've since sold one of them sold sold it to uh, my friend Gary uh, Dapper Man and this one I decided to keep because it has this lovely sort of like Arco V Chevron type pattern going on in it. And 
I do like these Medici's, they're really nice, but I just wasn't writing with both of them. I didn't need two. It was it was one of these where I decided I would buy two because I liked the materials so much and uh, and I got a good price for them, but in the end I decided I really ought to let one go. So it's a power vac filler, it's not a double reservoir, uh, it's a hook safe lock mechanism. Now I did get both with a medium nib. I since managed to swap this nib out. Uh, I swapped it out with um, with uh, Insta Emmy. Uh, he had a double broad nib. Uh, he wanted a, I think it was a medium nib, and uh, we did a trade. And uh, so I now have a double broad 23 cap palladium nib, and it's the only one I have uh, in my collection. So I'm actually quite glad that uh, that we were able to do that swap of the nibs, and then. A little bit later, this was the Medici Il Magnifico, and I saw this pen. I'd already had a number of um, uh, pens that were made of marble, which are these two here. And this pen is also made of marble, but it's also made of solid silver. It's it's a really heavy, heavy pen. But I like the look of this, and it's a gorgeous pen. I picked this up from Chris at Truffet. Um, really glad that I did and uh, since then a green version the serpentine has has come out and I I may pick that up at some point I'm not so sure but this has a 23 cap palladium medium nib there uh, going on it's got a hook safe lock mechanism it's a power vac filler it's not a double reservoir so it doesn't hold as much ink so in terms of double reservoir versus non double reservoir the 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 ones that don't have a double reservoir but there's still a power vac normally hold around one and a half milliliters of ink the double reservoirs hold around 2.2 to 2.5 milliliters of ink so i do have to ink this one up a little bit more um but it's a pen that i really like it's a medium nib it did come writing a bit dry again this is one of the nibs i did have to modify just frost the tines a little bit to open them up and make it write a little bit wetter and then we have this lovely Visconti Kaleido Voyager, and this is the Honey Almond. And again, I love this Kaleido sort of ribbon swirl that's going on here. So I think I picked these up before the other two Voyagers uh, that I showcased earlier in this video, the uh, Forest Green and the Yellow Dawn. Um, but I saw this and it was going... It wasn't a good price, to be honest. It was actually a high price, but I decided to buy it anyway. It was one of those uh, moments of weaknesses, you could say. But I do like these pens. They are cartridge converters. They're a good size in the hand. You can see the cartridge converter here. Standard Visconti converter. And you can see, in terms of the size of the hand, and also posting the cap, uh, now this does come with again uh, another gold nib it's an 18 carat gold nib and it's a fine nib and typically I don't normally like fine nibs that much but I decided to get this uh, and and I do still like it it's not a pen that I write a lot with but I do like it and then there are some Visconti Millennium Art. Now, I sold one recently. I sold the the green version, and I have the Typhoon Blue here, and I have the Burgundy. And these are nice pens. Uh, these were picked up on a bit of a whim as well, a little bit of a weakness. I wanted a few more Viscontis, and I decided I would buy these. Uh, these are sack-filling pens, and this one um, you'll see there is... Um, a limited edition one of 150 and it's number 69 uh, but it comes with a tubular nib and these tubular nibs are quite firm nibs uh, but um, they are normally quite juicy wet so this one comes with a medium nib and I do like the sack fillers to be honest um, and this is the burgundy version and you can see here has a little bit more pattern going on here. So these I'm actually selling because I don't write with these enough. And uh, if you do, if I haven't sold already and you do want one, then do ping me a message on email because uh, I am selling these. So the Burgundy one is uh, a limited edition one of 200, not 150. And this is 106. 
and it's a broad nib and again it's a tubular nib so you can see there the serial number 106 of 200 and then it's a broad nib there but uh, I just don't write with these enough and I just feel that I think they could probably go to a better home and trying to get these to line up sometimes is a little bit more tricky there you go so those two are for sale at the moment uh, if they haven't sold already and then I have these Visconti Millionaires and the great thing about these is that they come with a rollable attachment these are fountain pens though uh, so these are made of solid mar solid marble and they are heavy because marble is heavy so the great thing about these is, is that they do come with a different attachment so it comes with a rollable attachment that you can screw in instead so I've got a rollable that I can use if I want to or I can have the fountain pen with a push-pull style converter but as I said these are heavy pens they're not light but I do like these uh, you don't really want to post the cap because it becomes very back weighted but this marble is actually a beautiful marble you can see there so these I actually picked up for a very good price that these uh, Millennium uh, marbles so this one here is the Empire honey and these were made in 2015 so there were 988 of these pens each made this is 171 and this is 68 of 988 I got both of them in a medium nib and it's a push-pull um, push pull a um, piston there and again this is heavy it's not quite as heavy as the other one but again this comes with an attachment so I can swap them out if I want to and put a rollable on there and these nibs are 23 cap palladium nibs and both of these are medium nibs so you'll see there the medium nib but these are pens I do like. They don't hold a lot of ink, probably around 0 0.6, 0 0.7 milliliters of ink, but they are really nice pens and I do like them. So that was the second part of my Visconti pen series. There will be a third part which will have another 17 pens and that will come on another day. But thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.